Welcome to The Real Crime Diary, Daily Dose of Crime. Today we're delving into the dark intersection of power, sexual abuse, and institutional complicity. From the twisted fantasies of Marquis de Sade to the shocking real-life cases of Dominique Pellico, Harvey Weinstein, Sean Diddy Combs, and R. Kelly, we'll explore how the powerful exploit their positions to prey on the vulnerable. These stories, spanning centuries, share a chilling commonality the weaponization of influence to control and abuse others. We'll uncover how Sade's fictional libertines mirror modern-day predators and how institutions often protect the perpetrators rather than the victims. Join us as we unravel these disturbing patterns of exploitation and examine the societal structures that allow such abuses to persist. It's time to shine a light on the shadows where power and abuse collide. To understand the roots of power-driven sexual abuse, we need to journey back to the late 18th century, when the Marquis de Sade penned his infamous work, The 120 Days of Sodom. This shocking novel, though fiction, laid bare the horrifying potential of unchecked power and sadistic desires. In Sade's work, four wealthy libertines lock themselves away with a group of young victims, subjecting them to increasingly depraved acts of sexual violence. The Libertines' absolute power over their victims mirrors the dynamics we see in modern abuse cases, where the powerful exploit the vulnerable with impunity. Fast forward to today, and we see echoes of Saad's Libertines in figures like Dominique Pellico, Harvey Weinstein, and others. These men, much like Sade's characters, used their status, wealth, and influence as weapons to silence and manipulate their victims. The parallels are striking. Just as Sade's libertines created an isolated world where they could act without consequences, modern abusers often construct environments where they exert total control. Weinstein's hotel room encounters, for instance, became his personal domain of abuse, much like the castle in Sade's novel. Moreover, the methods of silencing victims remain eerily similar. Sade's characters used their noble status to shield themselves from consequences. Today's abusers use legal threats, career destruction, and social ostracism to keep their victims quiet. This historical context reveals a chilling truth. The abuse of power for sexual gratification is not a new phenomenon. It's a dark thread woven through history, from the pages of Saad's shocking literature to the headlines of our modern newspapers. Understanding this continuity is crucial in recognizing and dismantling the structures that allow such abuse to persist. Let's dive into some of the most notorious modern cases that have shocked the world and exposed the dark underbelly of power and abuse. We'll start with Dominique Pellico, a name that may not be as familiar to international audiences, but has sent shockwaves through France. Pellicott, a prominent businessman, maintained a facade of respectability for years while allegedly sexually abusing multiple women. His modus operandi was chillingly similar to other high-profile abusers, using his status and influence to isolate vulnerable women, manipulate them, and silence them through threats and coercion. The case broke open when one brave survivor stepped forward, encouraging others to share their stories and exposing a pattern of abuse that spanned years. Moving to Hollywood, we have Harvey Weinstein, once a titan of the film industry. Weinstein's case is perhaps the most infamous, sparking the hashtag MeToo movement and bringing down an empire built on talent, money, and fear. For decades, Weinstein used his position as a gatekeeper to stardom to sexually harass and assault numerous women. He employed a complex web of enablers, including lawyers and private investigators, to intimidate victims and journalists into silence. The eventual exposure of his crimes revealed not just individual acts of abuse, but an entire system designed to protect powerful predators. In the music industry, R. Kelly's case stands out for its longevity and the singer's brazenness. Despite rumors and allegations circulating for years, Kelly continued to enjoy commercial success and public adoration. His pattern of abuse targeted young, often underage girls, whom he isolated from their families and support systems. Kelly created a cult-like environment of control, using his fame and charisma to manipulate both victims and the public. It took decades and a documentary series to finally bring him to justice, highlighting how celebrity status can shield abusers from consequences. Most recently, Sean Diddy Combs has faced multiple allegations of sexual abuse and coercion. 
The music mogul's case is still unfolding, but it follows a familiar pattern. A powerful figure in the entertainment industry accused of using his influence to exploit and silence victims. The allegations against Combs span years and involve multiple accusers, suggesting a systemic issue rather than isolated incidents. What ties these cases together is a clear pattern of abuse of power. Whether in business, film, or music, these men allegedly used their status to create environments where their abuse could flourish unchecked. They relied on societal power imbalances, institutional protection, and the silencing of victims to maintain their positions of authority. The exposure of these cases has not only brought individual abusers to justice, but has also forced a reckoning with the systems that enabled them for so long. In the face of overwhelming power and systemic silencing, it was the courage of survivors that finally brought these cases to light. Their bravery not only led to the downfall of powerful abusers, but sparked global movements that continue to reshape our society. Take the case of Harvey Weinstein. For decades, his abusive behavior was an open secret in Hollywood, protected by his immense influence and a web of enablers. It wasn't until brave women like Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan decided to speak out publicly that the dam finally broke. Their voices, amplified by investigative journalism, encouraged dozens more survivors to come forward, creating an unstoppable wave that brought down one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry. Similarly, R. Kelly's victims fought for years to be heard. Many were young, vulnerable, and easily dismissed. But their persistence, coupled with the documentary series Surviving R. Kelly, finally forced the world to listen. These survivors, despite facing threats and public scrutiny, refused to be silenced. In France, the case of Dominique Pellicot unraveled when one woman found the strength to speak out. Her courage inspired others to share their stories, revealing a pattern of abuse that had gone unchecked for years. These individual acts of bravery coalesced into the global hashtag MeToo movement, founded by Tarana Burke. What began as a way to support young women of color who were survivors of sexual violence became a rallying cry for survivors worldwide. Me Too not only exposed individual abusers, but shed light on the systemic nature of sexual violence and the power structures that enable it. The impact of survivor courage extends beyond these high-profile cases. In workplaces, schools, and communities around the world, survivors are finding the strength to speak out, challenging the culture of silence that has long protected abusers. Their bravery is forcing institutions to confront their failings and pushing for meaningful changes in how we address sexual violence. The courage of these survivors reminds us that even in the face of seemingly insurmountable power, individual voices can create seismic shifts. Their stories continue to inspire others to speak out, ensuring that the fight for accountability and justice moves forward. When we look at cases like Dominique Pellico, Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, and Sean Combs, it's clear that their abusive behavior didn't occur in isolation. These men operated within systems that, intentionally or not, enabled and protected them for years. Let's start with the entertainment industry. In Weinstein's case, his behavior was an open secret in Hollywood for decades. Assistants were often used to set up meetings with potential victims, and when complaints were made, they were quickly silenced through settlements and non-disclosure agreements. The industry's power structure, where Weinstein held immense influence over careers, created a culture of fear that prevented many from speaking out. Similarly, R. Kelly's abuse was enabled by a music industry more concerned with profits than the welfare of young women. Despite years of allegations and even a criminal trial, Kelly continued to record, perform, and be celebrated. Record labels, concert promoters, and even some fans turned a blind eye to his behavior, prioritizing his talent over the safety of his victims. The legal system, too, has played a role in enabling these abusers. In many cases, statutes of limitations prevented victims from seeking justice years after their abuse. Complex legal maneuvers and high-priced lawyers have been used to intimidate victims and bury evidence. The case of Jeffrey Epstein, with his initial plea deal in Florida, exemplifies how wealth and connections can manipulate the legal system. Moreover, powerful networks of influence have shielded these abusers. Whether it's Weinstein's political connections, Epstein's ties to elite figures, or the Catholic Church's global reach in covering up abuse, these networks have worked to protect their own at the expense of victims. 
Law enforcement agencies have also fallen short. In the case of Larry Nassar, the FBI's mishandling of initial reports allowed his abuse to continue for years. Similarly, local police departments have been accused of not thoroughly investigating allegations against powerful figures like Weinstein or Kelly. Even the media, which eventually played a crucial role in exposing these abuses, was complicit for years. Stories were buried, allegations downplayed, and abusers continued to be portrayed positively in the press. This institutional complicity creates a perfect storm where abusers can operate with impunity. Victims are silenced, whistleblowers are punished, and the cycle of abuse continues. It's a stark reminder that addressing these issues requires more than just removing individual bad actors. We need systemic change across multiple institutions to truly protect the vulnerable and hold abusers accountable. The media has played a pivotal role in the narrative of sexual abuse cases, acting as both a beacon of truth and, at times, an unwitting accomplice to silence. Let's examine this dual nature through some high-profile cases. On one hand, we have the groundbreaking journalism that exposed Harvey Weinstein's decades of abuse. The New York Times and the New Yorker's investigations were instrumental in bringing Weinstein's crimes to light. These reports gave voice to survivors who had been silenced for years, sparking a global conversation and igniting the hashtag MeToo movement. Contrast this with the media's handling of R. Kelly's case. For years, despite persistent allegations and even legal actions against him, Kelly continued to receive positive media coverage. His music was played on radio stations, he was invited to high-profile events, and his alleged crimes were often treated as mere rumors or gossip. It wasn't until the documentary series Surviving R. Kelly that public opinion truly shifted, forcing a long-overdue reckoning. The Dominique Pellico case in France offers another perspective. Initial media coverage was sparse, with many outlets hesitant to report on allegations against a respected figure. It took the courage of multiple survivors coming forward to finally push the story into the spotlight. These cases highlight a troubling pattern. When allegations involve powerful, influential figures, media outlets often tread carefully, sometimes to the point of enabling abuse through their silence. The reasons vary. Fear of legal repercussions, loss of access to celebrities, or simply disbelief in the face of a beloved public figure's potential crimes. However, when media does its job right, it can be a powerful force for justice. The investigative reporting on Jeffrey Epstein's case, for instance, played a crucial role in reigniting interest in his crimes and ultimately led to his arrest. As consumers of media, we must remain critical and aware of these dynamics. We should question why certain stories are amplified while others are buried, and support journalism that gives voice to the voiceless, regardless of who the accused may be. Prince Andrew's connection to Jeffrey Epstein serves as a stark example of how elite power networks often shield abusers from accountability. Despite numerous allegations and damning evidence, Prince Andrew has largely avoided serious legal consequences, highlighting the stark disparities in our justice system. The royal's association with Epstein, a convicted sex offender, spans decades. Even after Epstein's initial conviction in 2008, Andrew maintained contact, demonstrating the insular nature of these high-powered circles. Virginia Giuffre's allegations that she was trafficked to the prince at age 17 should have prompted swift action. Instead, we witnessed a drawn-out saga of denials, a disastrous television interview, and ultimately, a civil settlement that allowed Andrew to avoid admitting wrongdoing. This case exemplifies how the wealthy and powerful often operate under a different set of rules. The ability to leverage vast resources, including top-tier legal teams and PR machines, creates significant obstacles for survivors seeking justice. Moreover, the interconnected nature of these elite networks means that exposing one individual could potentially implicate many others, leading to a collective circling of wagons. The challenges in holding the most powerful accountable are multifaceted. There's often a reluctance among law enforcement and prosecutors to pursue cases against high-profile individuals, fearing political repercussions or resource-draining legal battles. Media scrutiny can be easily deflected or manipulated by those with influence and means. Furthermore, the ability to settle cases privately, as seen with Prince Andrew, allows the elite to avoid public trials and potential criminal charges. This system of protection extends far beyond royalty. From politics to entertainment, finance to tech, 
we see time and again how those at the top can evade justice. It raises crucial questions about the very foundations of our legal and social structures. Are we truly equal under the law, or do wealth and status trump the pursuit of justice? The fight against sexual abuse and the exploitation of power isn't confined to any single country or culture. It's a global struggle that's reshaping societies worldwide. The ripple effects of high-profile cases like Weinstein, Epstein, and others have sparked movements and legal reforms across the globe. In South Korea, the hashtag MeToo movement gained momentum in 2018, leading to accusations against prominent figures in politics, entertainment, and sports. This cultural shift resulted in stricter laws against workplace harassment and a re-evaluation of power dynamics in Korean society. India saw a surge in activism following the brutal 2012 Delhi gang rape case. This tragedy led to significant legal reforms, including faster trials for sexual assault cases and harsher punishments for offenders. The country's Hat Me Too movement in 2018 further exposed abuses in media, entertainment, and politics. In the UK, the fallout from the Jimmy Savile scandal prompted an overhaul of institutional safeguarding policies. The independent inquiry into child sexual abuse was established, leading to recommendations for sweeping changes in how organizations handle abuse allegations. Australia's Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse resulted in landmark reforms, including mandatory reporting laws and the removal of statutes of limitations for child abuse cases. In the U.S., the Adult Survivors Act in New York allowed victims to file civil lawsuits against abusers, regardless of when the abuse occurred. Similar look-back window laws have been passed in other states, providing long-overdue paths to justice for survivors. These global changes reflect a growing understanding that addressing sexual abuse requires more than just punishing individual perpetrators. It demands a complete overhaul of systems that have long protected the powerful at the expense of the vulnerable. While progress has been made, challenges remain. The implementation of new laws varies widely, and cultural attitudes can be slow to change. But the global momentum behind these reforms suggests a significant shift in how societies view and respond to abuses of power. As we wrap up today's episode, it's clear that the fight against abuse of power is far from over. We've seen how figures like Dominique Pellico, Harvey Weinstein, and Jeffrey Epstein exploited their positions to commit heinous acts. We've also witnessed the courage of survivors who spoke out, sparking movements like hashtag Me Too and forcing societal change. Yet challenges remain. Institutional complicity, elite networks, and media influence continue to shield some abusers from justice. The question is, how do we dismantle these protective systems? In our next episodes, we'll delve deeper into this issue, exploring military sexual assault cases and corporate cover-ups. We'll examine how these institutions handle, or mishandle, abuse allegations, and what it means for accountability at the highest levels of society. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel these complex webs of power, abuse, and the ongoing struggle for justice.